Now that season 1 of House of the Dragon has reached massive popularity, the character of Viserys the First Targaryen is no longer a small blip in the expansive A Song of Ice and Fire lore. Paddy Considine brought more life to Viserys than you could ever believe based on what we read of him in Fire and Blood. He transformed Viserys from a gluttonous, laissez-faire monarch into a tragic father, husband, brother, and king of Westeros, though certainly not without his faults. Author George R.R. R. Martin said that Paddy Considine's Viserys was so much more powerful and tragic and fully fleshed out than my own version. I am half tempted to go back and rip up those chapters and rewrite the whole history of his reign. For the sake of all of us, I beg of you, George, please don't. This video is a continuation of my series on every Targaryen monarch. My last two videos were about the Sons of the Dragon, Aenys and Megor, and I made a video about Old King Jaehaerys last year. Check those out as well if you're interested. The HBO version of Viserys is a far better character than the canon version, but I am going to be talking about book lore in this video. However, as you're watching, keep in mind that the true version of Viserys is probably somewhere between the book version and the HBO version if George could go back and write him again. This video contains no spoilers for anything beyond House of the Dragon Season 1. Viserys Targaryen was born in the 77th year after Aegon's conquest. The Conqueror had been dead for 40 years, and his grandson Jaehaerys was in the 29th year of his 55-year reign. The old king was the middle-aged king at this point, at 43 years old. Viserys was the firstborn child of Balon and Alyssa Targaryen, the fourth and fifth children, respectively, of Jaehaerys and Elysanne. Viserys' uncle Aemon was the heir to the throne. Aemon was 22, married to Jocelyn Baratheon, and raising a three-year-old Rhaenys. Viserys is a second Targaryen of his name, the first being one of King Jaehaerys' older brothers, who was tortured and killed on Maegor the Cruel's command. You only get a number by your name once you become king, however, so that's why Viserys is Viserys I. He was born in a period of peace and prosperity. Like Pax Romana, but for a royal family of magical, silver-haired, incest-loving dragonlords. Pax Targaryana. The crown was in stable hands, and there was a clear succession in Aemon, the heir, and Balon, the spare. Viserys' uncle and father were beloved throughout the realm, and were fierce warriors. Aemon won tourneys, sat on his father's small council, and claimed the young dragon Caraxes, the bloodworm. Balon was called the Spring Prince and Balon the Brave. At the age of 16, after being defeated by his brother Aemon at the tourney of Duskendale, Balon enlisted in the tourney at Old Oak as a mystery knight called the Silver Fool. He unhorsed five opponents before falling to Lord Redwine, who knighted Balon on the spot. Balon went home to King's Landing and claimed Vagar, the second largest dragon alive, who once belonged to Queen Visenya and committed war crimes in Dorne. Balon took Vagar for their first ride across the Blackwater, and visited his brother Aemon and Caraxes on Dragonstone. Years earlier, Balon visited Balerion in the Dragon Pit, and hit the Black Dread in his snout. Thereafter, he was known as Balon the Brave. Balon and his sister Alyssa were always close, and as children, Alyssa would follow Balon around the Red Keep like a puppy. Alyssa had blonde hair, with no trace of silver. She wore boys' clothes when she could, and when she was six, she broke her nose while dueling with wooden swords. Her eyes were mismatched, one violet and the other green. She had a warrior's heart, and was named after her grandmother Alyssa Valerion, who kept Jaehaerys safe until he rose up against his uncle Magor. Alyssa married Balon when she was fifteen and he was eighteen. On their wedding night, Alyssa's sounds of pleasure could be heard all the way to Duskendale, and she wasn't shy about it. Aemon flew Caraxes at 17, and Balon flew Vagar at 16. Alyssa meant to fly at 15, and she nearly claimed Balerion, until the dragon keepers convinced her to take a swifter mount, the young, scarlet-scaled she-dragon, Meles. Two years later, in 77 AC, Alyssa gave birth to Viserys. Against all advice, Alyssa took Viserys up in the sky on Meles, 
when he was just nine days old, and Viserys giggled the whole time. Four years later, Alyssa had another son, Daemon, and took him flying as well. Two years later, in 83 AC, Aemon, Balon, and their father Jaehaerys mounted their three dragons and destroyed the attempted invasion of the Stormlands by the Dornish prince Morion Martell. They received a riotous welcome at home, as they had won the war without losing a single man. This is considered the apex of Jaehaerys' reign. Soon, things began to crumble. The next year, Alyssa went into a difficult labor with a third son, Aegon. At her bedside, she told Balon that you were made for battles, and I was made for this. Viserys and Daemon and Aegon, that's three. As soon as I am well, let's make another. I want to give you twenty sons, an army of your own. However, both Alyssa and Aegon died within the year. Balon had lost his wife, and Viserys and Daemon had lost their mother. In 92 AC, Prince Aemon, the heir to the throne, flew to Tarth, where a Mirish pirates had invaded half the island. Corlys Valerion sailed the royal fleet while Aemon flew ahead on Caraxes, saying, He does love to burn. Aemon landed at Lord Tarth's camp and discussed strategy, while a Mirish scouts crept up on them. One of them loosed a crossbow bolt meant for Lord Tarth, but it missed and struck Prince Aemon right through the neck. He died at 37 years old. Balon the Brave unleashed his wrath upon the Mirish invaders, Vagar howling for vengeance. Balon avenged his brother, burning all their ships and slaying the Mirish foot soldiers with Dark Sister. He returned with Aemon's corpse to King's Landing, hailed by the small folk as a hero. But when he saw his mother, Elisan, he wept into her arms. I slew a thousand of them, but it will not bring him back. Aemon's death was said to be like the hell horns of Valyrian legend, bringing death and destruction down on all those who heard their sound. It was the beginning of the decline of Targaryen power, which continued to sink throughout Viserys' reign, until it plummeted in the Dance of the Dragons, a war that never happens if Aemon doesn't die on Tarth. The next year, in 93 AC, a 16-year-old Viserys claimed Balerion the Black Dread, the last living creature to see old Valyria. If Book Viserys was a weeb for Valyrian history, like his HBO version, it's no wonder he sought the dragon with the most lore attached to it. Viserys took Balerion up in the air once and flew around the city, but the dragon was slow and sluggish, likely still injured from whatever horrifying chimera managed to harm him during his journey with Aria, 39 years earlier. More on that in this video if you're interested. Less than a year later, Balerion was dead, a bleak symbol for the Targaryen decline. After Aemon's death, Jaehaerys named Balon, now his eldest living son, to be the new heir and Prince of Dragonstone, putting Viserys in line to rule. Jaehaerys chose Balon above Aemon's daughter Rhaenys. Queen Alysanne was angry with Jaehaerys' decision and told him that a ruler needs a good head and a true heart. A cock is not essential. If your grace truly believes that women lack the wit to rule, plainly you have no further need of me. But she told Balon, her spring prince, that you will be a great king, even greater than your father. Balon was named Hand of the King in 100 AC, but hardly a year went by before he felt a pain in his stomach during a hunting trip in the Kingswood. After five days in pain, Balon died in the Tower of the Hand at the age of 44, of what seemed to be appendicitis. The year was 101 AC. The Targaryens should have been celebrating a century of their reign in Westeros, but instead, the family was in mourning, and there was a question of succession. Jaehaerys and Elysanne had 13 children, only four of which grew to adulthood and produced children of their own. Of course, Megella became a septa, Sarah went into exile, and Vagon became a maester. Aemon, Balon, and Alyssa were all dead, succeeded by Rhaenys, Viserys, and Daemon. By this point, Rhaenys was 27, had been married to Corlys Valerion for 11 years, and they had two children, a 9-year-old Lena and a 7-year-old Lenor. Viserys was 24, and had been married to his cousin Emma Arryn for 10 years. When they married, Viserys was 14, 
and Emma was 11. Don't worry though, Viserys waited two years before he consummated the marriage. He and Emma had one daughter, a four-year-old Rhaenyra. Damon was 20 and had been married to Rhea Royce for four years. They had no children and Damon hated spending time in Runestone, but did have a cute nickname for his wife. So Rhaenys brought forward her claim once more, just like when her father Aemon died. But Rhaenys now had two children, and even if the lords wished to overlook her and her daughter Lena on account of their gender, Laenor was male and could claim descent from King Jaehaerys' eldest son, while Viserys was descended from Jaehaerys' younger son. Jaehaerys' even younger son, Vagon, was 40 and an archmaester at the Citadel in Old Town. It is said that Jaehaerys met with Vagon the Dragonless in the King's Landing, and perhaps even directly offered him the throne, which Vagon refused. It is known that Corlys Valerion was massing his fleet and army on Driftmark to defend Laenor's rights. At the same time, Daemon, the rogue prince, gathered his own force to defend his brother Viserys' rights. Amidst the chaos, Vagon offered his father a solution, call a great council, let the lords decide, and avoid a violent conflict. So at Harrenhal, the largest castle in Westeros, over a thousand lords from every corner of the realm came to discuss the fourteen claims put forward. Most held the very weak claims as bastards of Sarah Targaryen or Magor the Cruel. One claimant said he descended from Gaemon the Glorious, a lord of Dragonstone who lived 100 years before Aegon the Conqueror. But in the end, only two claims mattered. Laenor, who was the eldest male descendant of Jaehaerys' eldest male descendant, and Viserys, who was the eldest male descendant, period. However, Laenor's claim derived from his mother and Viserys' through his father. That meant something to the lords. By a lopsided margin, the lords voted in favor of Viserys, and even though Jaehaerys didn't attend the Great Council in the books, he immediately proclaimed Viserys the Prince of Dragonstone and heir to the Iron Throne. Only two years later, in 103 AC, Jaehaerys died at the age of 69 after reigning for 55 years. Viserys ascended the throne at the most prosperous point in the history of his family's reign. Never before and never again would there be as many Targaryens alive, nor as many dragons. The early years of Viserys' reign were filled with feasts and tourneys, and at the center of court was Rhaenyra, called the Realm's Delight. At seven years old, Rhaenyra became the youngest dragon rider in history, taking Cyrax up into the sky. The dragon was named for a Valyrian goddess. At eight years old, Rhaenyra became her father's cupbearer, and Viserys was seldom seen without her by his side. Viserys didn't do a whole lot of ruling, however. Otto Hightower was called to court after Viserys' father Balon died, and replaced the Spring Prince as Hand of the King. Viserys kept Otto on as he ascended, and let his brother Daemon sit on the small council as Master of Coin for two years and then Master of Laws. That bore Daemon as much as Runestone did, so Viserys then gave him command of the City Watch, which he transformed into the Gold Cloaks. Daemon began to frequent the various pubs, gambling pits, and brothels in King's Landing, and soon became known as the Prince of the City, or Lord Fleabottom. Rhaenyra was fascinated by her uncle and his dragon. Viserys never claimed another dragon after Balerion's death, but Daemon flew Caraxes all over Essos, and brought exotic gifts back for Rhaenyra. Tragedy struck once again in 105 AC. Queen Emma died giving birth to Balon, the son Viserys always wanted. Soon after, Balon died as well, and Daemon was spotted in Flea Bottom making a jest out of the quote, heir for a day. His wife and son dead, Viserys decided to ignore the precedent set by the Great Council and by King Jaehaerys after Aemon's death, in which the claim of a man was preferred regardless of the woman, and he proclaimed his daughter Rhaenyra the princess of Dragonstone and heir to the Iron Throne. Hundreds of lords bent the knee to Rhaenyra in the Red Keep, but Daemon was not amongst them. He went to Dragonstone with Masaria, the White Worm of Lys, and squatted on the island for half a year. When Daemon presented Masaria with a dragon's egg for their unborn child, Viserys commanded that he put the egg back, send Masaria away, 
and return to his lawful wife, Rhea Royce, in the Vale, or else be named a traitor. Damon agreed, so he flew back to his unhappy life in Runestone, while Masaria had a miscarriage during a nasty storm on the Narrow Sea, where she was sailing back to Lys. Damon spoke no syllable of grief, but he blamed Viserys, and began to brood day and night. Back in King's Landing, Viserys was expected to remarry and father a son, despite the fact that he just named Rhaenyra his heir. Grand Maester Runciter suggested Lena Valerion, who at 12 years old had already claimed Vagar, the largest dragon alive. By marrying Lena, Viserys could heal the rift between House Valerion and House Targaryen after Rhaenys and her children were denied the Iron Throne. Viserys agreed to remarry, but not to a 12-year-old, and not for political advantage either. He chose Alicent Hightower, the 18-year-old daughter of Otto Hightower, the Hand of the King. Alicent had been around court for years, and had read the old King Jaehaerys on his deathbed. When news of the marriage reached Daemon in the Vale, he had the messenger whipped out of anger, knowing that he would soon be pushed further in a line of succession once Alicent gave Viserys a son. The very night of the wedding, Corlys Valerion chose not to attend, and instead he hosted Daemon on Driftmark. The two scorned men set their sights on the Stepstones, where the Triarchy of Lys, Myr, and Tyrosh had invaded. Damon said that Dark Sister is made for nobler tasks than slaughtering sheep. She has a thirst for blood. The Triarchy called themselves the Three Daughters of Valyria, claiming descent to the Freehold. Damon, a true Dragonlord descendant of Valyria, wanted to set them in their place. The war lasted from 106 to 108 AC, and ended with Damon killing Kragos Jahar, the Prince Admiral of the Triarchy in single combat with Dark Sister. In 109 AC, Daemon declared himself King of the Stepstones, and Corlys Valerion placed a crown on his head. But the Chiarchy launched a second invasion, this time aided by Dorne. Let Daemon play at war, Viserys said. It keeps him out of trouble. In the meantime, Alicent Hightower gave birth to two sons, first Aegon, and then Aemond, who was half the size of his brother, but twice as fierce. A rift grew between Alicent and Rhaenyra, who both fought to be viewed as the first lady of the realm. The issue of succession was not one Viserys wished to revisit, so Rhaenyra remained the heir, and Alicent's sons were simply princes, and nothing more. Otto Hightower pestered Viserys about the succession so much that he fired Otto and sent him back to Old Town but the Queen's party of Hightower supporters remained in court. In 111 AC, there was a great tourney to celebrate Viserys and Alicent's five-year anniversary. Rhaenyra famously wore a dramatic black dress, and Alicent a green gown. Thus, the factions of the Blacks and the Greens had been established. During the tourney, Daemon appeared in the sky, and landed Caraxes right in the middle of the tourney grounds. He bent the knee to Viserys, and offered him his crown of the Stepstones. The lords and the small folk erupted in a thunderous cheer, as the sons of the Spring Prince were reunited. Damon stayed at court for half a year, and spent hours on end with Rhaenyra, telling her stories of his travels, and racing Cyrax and Caraxes to Dragonstone and back. But Damon then leaves the city again, and sources disagree why. Grand Maester Runciter cites a vague argument between Damon and Viserys. Septon Eustace says that Damon seduced Rhaenyra and took her virginity, and when Eric Cargill found them in bed together, Rhaenyra begged her father to let her marry Damon. Mushroom, the court fool, says that Damon groomed Rhaenyra to seduce Kristen Cole, her sworn protector, and that Cole denied her. Damon asked Viserys to let him marry Rhaenyra, but was instead sent away. Regardless of which story is true, Damon went back to the Stepstones. And in 114 AC, Rhaenyra married Laenor Valerion at the age of 17. Viserys had received countless marriage offers for Rhaenyra, and even considered marrying her to the Prince of Dorne, which at the time was still an independent kingdom. Alicent urged Viserys to betroth Rhaenyra to Aegon, but Rhaenyra was 10 years older, and Aegon was 6. And Viserys believed Alicent simply wanted to get her own blood on the Iron Throne. He might have been right. But if Rhaenyra had married Aegon, 
the Dance of the Dragons probably never happens. It wasn't a bad decision to marry Rhaenyra to Laenor, and thus make amends with House Valerion. But the best decision would have been Aegon. Rhaenyra did not want to marry Laenor, and again, we have two stories from two sources. Septon Eustace says that Christian Cole professed his love to Rhaenyra, and begged her to leave with him to Essos. Rhaenyra refused him, saying she's the blood of the dragon, and is meant to be queen, not the wife of a common sellsword. Mushroom says that it was Rhaenyra who went to Kristen, and asked him to sleep with her. Kristen refused and sent Rhaenyra away, and then she ran into Harwin Strong, and it was Breakbones who slept with Rhaenyra that night. However it happened, Rhaenyra and Laenor got married, and Kristen Cole began to support Queen Alicent instead of Princess Rhaenyra. During the wedding tourney, Cole killed Joffrey Lonmouth, who was rumored to be Laenor's lover. Alicent then made him her personal protector, and the enmity between Alicent and Rhaenyra grew further, and Viserys did nothing about it, letting the poison fester. In 114 AC, Rhaenyra had her first child, Jaceris, a boy with brown hair and brown eyes. Soon after, Alicent had her fourth child, Daron, a boy with traditional Valyrian features. A year later, Rhea Royce died in the Vale after falling from her horse. Daemon flew there from the Stepstones to lay his wife to rest, and to petition Lady Jane Arryn for control of Runestone. It instead passed to Rhea Royce's nephew, and Jane Arryn told Daemon that he was unwelcome in the Vale. From there, he flew to Driftmark, the one place he knew his presence would be welcomed. On Driftmark, a 22-year-old Lena Valerion caught Daemon's eye. She was betrothed to the drunken, wastrel son of the Sea Lord of Bravos. So naturally, Daemon bullied the Sea Lord's son so badly that he wanted a duel, and Daemon slew him with Dark Sister. He married Lena within the fortnight. Of course, Daemon did not get Viserys' approval for the marriage, so he and Lena took an extended honeymoon across the narrow sea. Around the same time, Rhaenyra gave birth to her second son, Lucerys and he had brown hair and brown eyes once again. Those at court made note of his appearance, and the fact that Harwin Strong was at Rhaenyra's bedside. In 116 AC, Lena gave birth to twin daughters, Bela and Reyna, in Pentos, both of whom had silver hair and purple eyes. Soon after, Daemon took his family back to King's Landing to present his daughters to the king. Viserys said, Daemon is a father now. He will have changed and the sons of the Spring Prince were reconciled a second time. The next year, Rhaenyra had her third son, Joffrey. Guess what color hair and eyes he had. If you said silver and purple, you would be wrong. The court of King's Landing whispered that the three boys' true father was Harwin Breakbone Strong. But regardless, their mother was still a Valyrian, and passed on her Valyrian magic. Each of her boys' dragon eggs had hatched and Viserys held little Jace on his lap on the Iron Throne, and told him, One day, this will be your seat. The hate between Rhaenyra and Alicent passed to their children, and Jace, Luke, and Joffrey formed a rivalry with their uncles, Aegon, Aemond, and Daron. Things were much happier on Dragonstone and Driftmark, where Rhaenyra became close with Daemon and Lena. The trio often flew their three dragons together above the water, and Rhaenyra announced that her eldest sons, Jace and Luke, would be betrothed to Bela and Reyna. That was 118 AC, the calm before the storm. 120 AC is known as the Year of the Red Spring. It began with Lena Valerion entering a disastrous labor with her third child. The baby lived for an hour and was disfigured, while Lena lost all her strength. Three days later, she crawled out of bed and made her way towards Vagar so that she could fly one last time. She didn't make it though, and died with Daemon and Rhaenyra by her side. In the book, it says that the Year of the Red Spring was when many of the long-simmering tensions and jealousies that had plagued the Seven Kingdoms finally came to a boil. A year when many and more would have reason to wail and grieve. Soon after Lena's death, Corlys and Rhaenys lost their other child, Laenor who was killed during a fair in Spicetown on Driftmark. He was said to have been stabbed by Carl Corey, who was never seen again. 
All the Valerians and Targaryens were at Leonor's funeral. It is said that Driftmark had become the new Valyria. There were so many dragons. Viserys meant to use the occasion to let his son Aemon, the only sibling without a dragon, claim an egg from the Dragonmont, the volcano on Dragonstone. However, Vagar had just lost its rider, and Aemon sneaked out of the castle at dawn to claim her. He circled twice above high tide, but when he came down, he was confronted by Rhaenyra's sons. The boys fought, Aemon called them strongs, and Luke slashed out Aemon's right eye. Aemon howled in pain, and Vagar roared with him. Viserys tried to make peace, but Alicent demanded an eye for an eye from Luke, and Rhaenyra demanded that Aemon be sharply questioned to learn where he heard the vile and totally untrue allegation that her sons were fathered by Harwin Strong. It was Aegon who said, Everyone knows, just look at them. Viserys forced everyone to forgive each other, but their false smiles fooled no one but the king himself. The seeds of war were being planted. Now, each of Rhaenyra's sons and each of Alicent's children all had dragons. All of these children had fire-breathing nukes. King Jaehaerys understood the importance of limiting the number of dragon riders alive at one time. Only three of his children were bonded with dragons. His heir, Aemon, his spare, Balon, and his eldest daughter, Alyssa. No one else was given a dragon's egg, nor were they allowed to try to bond with one. Viserys was far too lenient, and now there were two rival factions that he let grow in his court, both sides with enough dragon power to destroy their family and legacy. Viserys was 43 and fat, ailed with gout, back pain, and shortness of breath. His hand of the king, Lionel Strong, had just died in the fire of Harrenhal as he and his son Harwin became two more victims of the Red Spring. Viserys needed a new hand. He considered Rhaenyra in order to teach his heir how to govern her future realm. Instead, he turned back to Otto Hightower. Meanwhile, news reached the court that Rhaenyra and Daemon had been remarried. To each other. Viserys was outraged, and Rhaenyra was pregnant once again. The year of the Red Spring ended as it began with a woman in childbirth. Rhaenyra and Daemon had their first son, named Aegon, and unlike his half-brothers, Aegon was an obvious Targaryen, born with silver hair and purple eyes. And Alicent was pissed because she already named her kid Aegon 13 years earlier. By 123 AC, Rhaenyra had her second son with Daemon, and fifth son total, named Viserys after her father. The same year, Viserys wed his children Aegon and Helena to each other, and the next year, at the age of 14, Helena had twins, Jaehaerys and Jaehaera. Conflict arose once again in 126 AC. Corlys Valerion fell ill with a fever, and questions were brought forth about his succession. Both of his children, Laenor and Lena, were dead, so naturally, Driftmark should pass to his eldest grandson, Jaehaerys. However, since Rhaenyra was the heir to the throne, and Jace was her heir and would one day follow her as king, Rhaenyra asked instead that her second son, Lucerys, be named heir to Driftmark. Corlys's cousin Vaemond protested, saying that Rhaenyra's children were bastards fathered by Harwin Strong. So Daemon, calm and rational as ever, had Vaemond's head removed from his body and his corpse fed to Cyrax. Vaemon's younger cousins still presented their case before Viserys, however, who now hardly had the strength to climb up the Iron Throne. Still, he ordered that the Valerian's tongues be removed in defense of Rhaenyra's sons. But he stumbled on the Iron Throne and sliced his hand open to the bone. On New Year's Day in 127 AC, a feast was held to celebrate Viserys' recovery, but after he went to bed, his son Aemond gave a toast. I have never known anyone so strong as my sweet nephews, Amon said, so let us drain our cups to these three strong boys. It's unknown whether or not Viserys learned about this, but regardless, he did nothing. After his injury, Viserys continued to weaken, and he never again sat upon the Iron Throne. He relinquished day-to-day -day control of the realm to his hand, Otto Hightower, and the small council which consisted of five greens and one black, plus Grand Maester Orwile, who was new to the council and neutral. 
Essentially, Viserys' physical condition and apathy towards ruling resulted in Otto Hightower stacking green support in King's Landing. On the third day of the third moon of 129 AC, Helena brought her three children to visit their grandfather Viserys in his chambers. Viserys told the twins stories about their great-great-grandfather, King Jaehaerys, until he felt a tightness in his chest. That night, at the age of 52, Viserys Targaryen died in his sleep. Then the storm broke, and the dragons danced. Viserys ruled Westeros for 26 years. On the surface, those 26 years were peaceful and prosperous, largely thanks to the success of Jaehaerys' reign. Viserys inherited a stable realm, but right underneath his nose and ever-growing belly, his family became fragmented. The fire within the Targaryens had begun to erupt, surrounding the tension of Viserys' succession, and his death ushered in the most disastrous event in Targaryen history. Twelve dragons and their riders tore the realm apart, and by the end, House Targaryen never again held the same power as when Viserys first ascended his throne. So while he wasn't a cruel king, or a power-hungry king, or a warmonger, Viserys was a negligent father and ultimately failed at being the protector of the realm, since as soon as he died, the long festering poison he allowed to exist between members of his family finally resulted in the outbreak of war. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on Viserys Targaryen, both the book version and the show version. The next video in this series will be about the reigns of Aegon II and Rhaenyra amidst the Dance of the Dragons. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Do keep trying, Selena. Sooner or later, you may get one who looks like you. This is a vile accusation. Just harmless fun.